throwing this episode at you. You know what? I'm not expecting. It. You're not. Yep. What the hell? What the hell's wrong with you? It's gonna show up. He's gonna be at the very end of the last episode. Be like, hey, what? And then it's gonna cut. No, it's not. We're going there. <laughs> That's what well, I expect. He's not gonna make that noise. <laughs> <I can tell laughs> <you> that. <laughs> <laughs> Tries to jump and shot. Cut. <laughs> That's what I expect. Now I'll be satisfied. You're lying. No, don't lie to yourself. I'm not lying. Hey everybody, Wave Squadron reporting in. I'm Eric. I'm Calvin. Aaron. Aaron. Oh, um, shoot, I forgot Melanie said to do this. Yeah, okay. New I'm movie. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you know what? Jedi, we see them with beards, but we never see them with mustaches. You know who we do see with mustaches? Imperials. Sometimes rebellion pilots, I suppose, too. Like Biggs. He had a mustache, didn't he? Porkins. Biggs. Yeah. Porkins? Porkins had a mustache? Yeah. I don't know. I can't remember. Look, look up Porkins. This is like important stuff. This is why you come to Wave Squadron, everybody. Is did it? he have it? Yes or no? Go in the comments. He either had a mustache. Go with your gut. Or goatee. Go with your gut. Is this important? It's not important. It's, it's very important. Uh, no. No? Uh, he's got, oh, okay, no. The he's got a mustache beard. and yeah. like, yeah, I, I was like thinking, a neck beard. I was thinking on. it was like shadows. All of you shit. that said beard, you're correct. We Big boys, we got to define our jawline somehow, you know what I'm saying? All right. Well, that's not it. Last time on Ahsoka. Uh, <laughs> good, good stuff. Was that you doing a space whale, or is that me watching Anakin Skywalker? Both. <laughs> no. It was a great meld of Clone Wars and Ahsoka, like getting the old and the new kind of together, especially if you didn't watch the animated stuff. Yeah. Um, and then just progressing our, I don't know, mythology, story, lore of the of the Pergo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and our our girl Ahsoka who. <clears throat> Dropped a lot of her luggage, her baggage about Darth Vader, and Space then now sister. seems a little lighter and a little whiter because <laughs> she's completely decked out in the mm-hmm. the white gear now. And she has silver stuff. Yeah, she does have some silver stuff. I love her gauntlets. The gauntlets look so cool. amazing. They do. My favorite um, part. It's really so cool. So yeah, we are uh, we are on our way to a galaxy far, far away. Earth. Uh, we had a poll last time. I'm sure. God. I get what you mean. Gosh darn Patreon changing their app and like it's all go to blindwave.com where you can check out Blind Wave Beyond. Mm-hmm. We're gonna be having our poll at the end of this video on the website today. Yay! <laughs> the poll was is this truly a force ghost or just a hallucination? Notice I didn't put who in there, just in case people were gonna get spoiled. Yeah, don't spoil people. Uh eighty-eight percent of people said that it's real. Yeah. Yeah, I figured it's going to think. 88. It's a lot. Um, let's see here. Aaron Harris says, I hope it's never answered, because I don't think it really matters. Only how the experience changes Ahsoka. That is the tr- correct answer. Good job. You found the <coughs> hidden option. <laughs> it's kind of like, it's kind of like the Mortis <laughs> trilogy, right? Where yep. we don't get really get yeah. a great answer of mm-hmm. what exactly happened. It's not set in stone. It's up to a little bit of interpretation, though. Resolute Rise says it's in her mind. He was wearing the wrong, wrong robes, but I think it should never be specified by Dave and leave it all up in, to interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever you're force like ghost, you got you get a whole new you know kit, right? You get a whole new outfit. Do you? Yeah. Did that Remember when he showed Obi-Wan? up in, in Endor? He got the whole new. Yeah, but Obi Wan didn't get a new kit. He just wore the no, same was, no, old no, damn. You know what? He was guy. already wearing the kit, but this was way more fresh. Didn't have any sand in the pockets or anything. Yeah. It was like those beach towels. Did he have to like remake was, that on Tatooine? Hmm. That like his robe. Did he have to like yeah. he didn't wear the same one the yeah. whole time he lived on Tatooine. I'm sure no, that's why it got yeah, lighter and lighter. Two. Yeah. Yeah, at least two. Well you can do all that. It's Jedi robes. You think it washes and like there's holes in it? No, it's good shit. Copper Little says, How would the little dude hear lightsabers in Ahsoka's mind? Uh, the same way that like Kylo it. Ren probes right. yeah. Ray trying to go into her mind. Yeah, but what about Hera? Hera and we heard it too, and we don't have the. We force. can hear everything, and we saw it. They didn't see it. No, we saw it. I, I just I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, shut up, Aaron. <laughs> we saw it. Well, here's Steve has a good one here. Honestly, I don't even think he's a Force ghost anymore. LOL. After rewatching the episode, I kept an eye on Anakin's eyes. And while his left eye does turn Sith yellow, at the end of the battle when Ahsoka throws away her lightsaber, it's clear that even without the red glow, his right eye is fully red. So, yes, I believe he's become the father now. A lot of people had a lot of theories about eyes, and eyes. in my opinion, it was just they're using the reflective props and... 
they mess with the contacts mm-hmm. that they already have on. Ah, uh, what else we have? Awesome. But it's a cool idea, though. The father. I, I believe it. I do. I believe. I don't know. Because with belief comes doubt. Um, uh, we'll end with Caden Harris. It says, either way works because I want this to be a canon appearance because it was perfect. It is a canon appearance. It was a canon appearance. It was Not fantastic. A, canon appearance. a great moment. Um, but a moment that only has true weight if we get to see how it's changed Ahsoka. Sure. I mean, that's Other than the, her just being like, I'm happy now. That's the ultimate mm-hmm. reason for all of it happening, regardless mm-hmm. of real yeah. or not real. Yeah. Uh, so last week gave us a lot. What will this week give us? Yeah. Probably nothing. It gave me a mustache. Right. Don't just, just skip this video. I'm sure there's nothing good. What? It starts with a T. Yeah. Whoa. Pretty. Is this it, because it's it's farther? Virgo. It's yeah. It's faster is too. Is it Virgo or is it because we're going like those faster? Are, those are galaxies, not stars. Better. Intergalactic, yeah. Perhaps you could have a story for me. Mm-hmm. Something was going on. She could have ended this. But then we wouldn't save Ezra. Mm-hmm. No war. And no Ezra. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Who yang. And second thought, tell me one of those stories. Your choice. Very well. I want to hear one. Mm-hmm. A long time ago, mm-hmm. in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> oh. All right, now we're going to come back and we're going to be in the story he's talking about. Oh, right? David, Ted, tell me all the Star Wars scripts. Just start reading them. That would be cool. Right? Yeah, we don't even continue with the whales. We're in a whole different... Old Republic. Oh. Far, far away. <laughs> Her focus to find Ezra Bridger blinds her. I believe she can still be of some use to us. Mm. Tracking complete. We have arrived at our destination. We're preparing to exit hyperspace. The galaxy gotta be like everything's purple, I guess. Space the stars are playing. Oh look at that. That is Peridia. The ancient homeworld of my ancestors, the Dathomiri. Huh? Ah. My people were among the first to harness and ride the creatures in the wow. days before time was counted. The whales came here to die. Peridia is a graveyard. Uh, well, that's different. Yeah. Oh my god. Whale, the whale fall. The ring of the planet is a whale graveyard? Holy That shit. is so metal. Is this a, what's Lion King? Oh, no it's not. A it's, it's in space, Earth. <laughs> Just, so are there more Death of Mary then? Like night? So this is their must home be. Planet. Their home planet's got to be like, like the Lasat. Like, oh, those are our last two. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, poor Grievous. <laughs> he didn't do genocide. <laughs> like he hoped. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Oh, dude, that's live action Night Sisters. Yeah. Why are we spin scene that live action Night Sister? You huh? fool. No, dude, like for realsies. We know what we're talking about. She casted magic. She's. It was Night Sister magic. You didn't. You fucking you didn't even tell she was Night Sister when we first saw her. Yeah, because it was subtle. Yeah, because it was the a reveal. The lead was very. It was a reveal. Fuck. I feel like you're making my points for me. <laughs> It's a, it's a seeing stone. Yeah, it's thing. like the place they were at for the galaxy uh-huh. map. Oh, <laughs> oh they all they have, have little... three. That's a better system. Welcome, child of Dathomir. <laughs> you do our ancestors credit. It reeks of Jedi. Know which they which know, one? Yeah, I was gonna say. Him? Her? It is dangerous. Well, they're looking at her. I figured they probably. No, oh, no. Death balls. Hey, we had a deal. Where is Ezra? Where is he? Yeah, we don't like Jedi. They really don't like Jedi. Maybe 
green. Anything that smells like Jedi. Dude, I love the interactive lighting with those things. <laughs> so cool. Name's Jabba. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what are those? Wolves. Hey, wolves. Some kind of wolves, yeah. Some kind of reptile wolves. They kind of really, uh, maybe. They kind of look like the Loth wolves, I thought, but. It's gonna open, but it's gonna be somebody else. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, no, that's. That's a different kind of rumbling. Thrawn arrived? I think so, yes. I think it's the Hydra. The Chimera. That's it. Ah, the Chimera, Calvin! Yes! That's what I meant. Oh, look how derelict it is. <laughs> it's like it's an own graveyard. It is. It's been consuming itself to stay. Oh, I want to see the bottom. Yes! <laughs> It's, bad. it's, it's, it's missing, missing yeah. X-Wings hanging oh. in the background. Oh, he's got a lot of stormtroopers. Whoa! <laughs> he's gotta be like... Oh! Oh, oh shit! Enoch! <laughs> it, Enoch. It kinda. Enoch is the... He, he, he becomes Metatron, the voice of God. <laughs> what a hell of a name! <laughs> <laughs> Love how they're re replacing the cracks with gold. It's like what Kylo did with his helmet. Are they it's like a Japanese practice? For yeah. Undead. <laughs> they have a lot of red on them. Like sister magic, man. Yeah, no. Yeah. You got red on you. <sighs> Those troopers were a seat. <laughs> Those are not. Dude. What was first yeah. just a dream has become a frightening reality for those who may impose us. The prisoner is Sabine Wren. Now there's a familiar name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're quite right. She'd be of great use to us. He doesn't blink. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, man. Oh, I'm so happy for Lars. <laughs> it's almost weird seeing the voice come out of the face. <laughs> Does that make sense? It, it really is. Where is Ezra? Ah, yes. The desire to be reunited with your long lost friend. How that singular focus will reshape our galaxy. Just answer the question. I'm aware of your agreement with Balan Skull, and I intend to honor it. You should have provisions, a mount. I thought it, he was Enoch. No. It's also quite possible that your friend is dead. Hmm. If you survived, I'm sure he's doing just fine. I have faith in my friends. You oh my gamble God. the fate of your galaxy. He's so unnerving. On that belief. You wouldn't understand. What kind of ride you got around here? Perhaps. Oh, is this one of the wolf things? It's yeah, like a it is. Looking thing. It's a rat. It's a bat dog. Oh, they give her her armor and stuff? That's cool. People locator, activate. No. Wow. Who has the right? He said, uh, no man. Oh. oh, the cool hat. That is a cool hat. Oh. Got him. Your face, I guess. Oh. Man, what if they shot her in the face? They should have. Dude, the samurai look is so cool. Oh, oh shocky, shocky. That is good. Oh. You had a close quarters weapon that you could use. Well, she's gonna Sabine. have to. She's lost both her pistols. 
They knew about Jedi, it's probably like. Poncho. It's not a poncho. It's poncho. It's not a poncho. It's doing everything a poncho should do. You mean not cover half your body? Improve your silhouette. It matters not whether Ren and Bridge are killed or stranded here. The same can be said for your two mercenaries. I never realized how tall Lars was. He is tall. At least compared to him. You didn't notice that Star Wars Celebration? I was. Man, was man everyone, on that everyone stage. was tall on that stage. You, <laughs> no, no, you abandoned me! Huh? <laughs> Aww, it's not you even full. You were a coward. Mm. Aww, you don't know me. I'm just brave. I think that happens with this. I'm gonna burn the set down. You guys need to, to this rat dog horse. If, red, if anything happens to this rat dog horse, it's a bat. I will set the table wolf. on fire. There's no wings, Calvin. It has bat ears and a bat face. It could be rat ears and, bat and teeth. a rat face. It'll go no, it. it's not rodent at all. It is very rodent. Bats, not at all. Bats are flatter. This is very soon the tablecloth and gas. Look at that. Is that why I stink? I'm like a rat. Okay, fine. I'll give you another chance, but you better not bail on me this time. Got it? You suppose it. He's like out on here. Skull. He's out here with no friends. <laughs> it's a rock. You're embarrassing yourself. Is where I'm a fake rock? <laughs> oh. It's Whoa, a crab person. The turtle rock thing. Okay, yeah, that trick's over. Oh. Crab. Get up, come on, I can see like you there. I'm a crab. Oh, I love this new galaxy. Can it talk? I just want to explore. I'm not gonna hurt you. <laughs> it's got a little jacket. On. <laughs> it's practical. What's... Oh. This? Recognize that symbol. Similar to what's on what Ezra. Oh, what you got there? <laughs> How is that possible? Ezra, do, do you do you know Ezra? He's Ezra. He's not Ezra. Toto. Toto. It's a whole community. I love it. Oh, I, I didn't notice these. <laughs> Yeah, oh, oh, rock village. Boulder City. Don't eat anyone. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> ah. They won't miss the little one. <laughs> oh, the baby. Mm, the soft shell. I'm in a hammock. I wonder if they have to try to replace shells, or if their like rock shell like grows with them. I don't know. Like, is it more turtle all, Like, lion the, like once a year? The baby year, had, a, shells. had a tiny shell, so I figure it probably grows, it grows with, them. with them. And then they paint it like a rock? Or it just becomes that. I love the slower pace to show so much of them. This is so cool. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> He's got a beard. Oh, yeah. No. So, sure took you long enough. Oh, he's perfect. <laughs> it worked, didn't it? Didn't it? It worked. <laughs> and I undid it. Now we gotta find our way back. Stop throwing. Oh, we got Ezra. Ezra's theme. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one back there had a whole bunch of crap on his shell. Like a, like a merchant traveling like man. Yeah, like a shaman kind of thing. Oh. <laughs> you know, he has like a little like. Chainmail? Yeah. 
Yeah. I have so many questions. You're riding a hound. How'd that happen? In fact, how did you find me? How did you get here? That's awesome. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Not right now. Sabine. Hey. Mm -hmm. I just want to be happy that I found you. Uh, After all this time, can I have that? No, because Balin and the Raiders are coming. Thanks for coming. Hmm. I can't wait to go home. It's so cool. It's I cool. hope they go home. She has no plans. This is as far as she got so far. Mm-hmm. The threat of fate has spoken to us. Another comes. A Jedi. They ride the travelers. But that is unwelcome news. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> If a star whale approaches Peridia, destroyed with prejudice. He does not like them. Great mothers, I shall once again require the aid of your dark magic. The thread of destiny demands it, Grand Admiral. No! <sighs> what? Which Chatham yeah. is... That's... Yeah! That's that guy. Yeah! That's that guy. That's that yeah. guy. It's from Expanse. I'm that guy. Huh? He's that guy. He's Enoch? Captain Enoch. Show me his face, it's so pretty! No, it's covered with a thing. You know how many pretty people have been covered for their face? Also, Claudia Black. This is Claudia Black. Claudia Black. Black. No, I want to see. No. Aaron never never Are you, why? Waste time on Aaron, you know you can't see. I don't know who that is. Uh, no, hold on, let me see again. Uh-huh, yeah. You're gonna try to read information now. Now you mean No, you... what's the sci-fi show that... There used to be a mod that I used to play on Jedi Outcast, and it had characters from this other sci-fi show. And I remember being like, "This is these look really Star Wars." Something Scape, Farscape, Farscape. Was she in Farscape? Yes. Okay, Farscape. She's from Farscape. <laughs> it's been a long time to get there. Okay. She's also in Stargate. Wait, who's she playing? Yeah, I was gonna say Stargate. That's my assumption. Um, play one of, one the, of the the great one mothers. of the great mothers. Yeah. Oh, we get their names. Jane oh. Edwina Seymour. I feel like I recognize that name too. Okay. Jane. All right. Well, sorry. Jane Seymour. Wait. It, having Wes in here is awesome. I hope we get to see. I, Isn't that? I didn't clearly see his face. I couldn't hear him properly. I feel bad, but I love him. He, he, well, yeah. He has a mask and his voice is modulated. I know. There's no way to know it's him. I would have loved him ten times more if I knew it was him. It could have been... I'm not exaggerating. Maybe 11. It could have been Brett Dalton or freaking Donald Glover. You know? Like, you'd have yeah. no idea with the way they modulate the voice in the, the I mask. Know. I know, but it's just cool to have cool. Farscape and right. the Expanse in here. She's the Borg Queen. Oh, and I, Star Trek. I yeah. Wouldn't, damn. I wouldn't know that. All right, well, look well, up. What is, what is Gerald? Look Press it up. up. Uh, ga, ga, Galleon. I don't know who she is. Is she from something? Um, I don't recognize her. I'm sorry. But she's Wanda. in a great line. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Uh, also, wait. Criminal Minds, maybe? Okay. I haven't watched that either. I've lost interest in this bit. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. Information looks. I don't want to talk about. But this is not, the information look up, and you cut it out, and then you put the stuff you need. You know. It, but it's not sci-fi. Eric, there's nothing to talk about in this episode. It was oh rather really slow and boring, dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude, <laughs> we got a secret Night Sisters origin. That's no, I like crazy. That. I like that we're expanding upon what. Yeah. The, not necessarily Night Sisters, but the Dathomir read. Yeah. Right? Like the Dathomiri like, Empire. Oh, the Dathomiri. That's okay. They're from Dathomiri. And then we're like, well, well there's a Zabrik. And like, I've, I've always been like, but what's going on with this and this and this? And now they're like, yeah. They're like, here's an origin. Here's where their ancestors came from. Yeah. And then they came out and did this. Yeah. Kind of like Lissat. We talked about that a little bit mm -hmm. with Lissat. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. But the, for, like stemming from an entire world of the galaxy, which it really works for me just because I know Dave Filoni, who wrote this, 
has been on the forefront of like, so what's the death of Miriam Magic? Is that the force? And he has to hear George Lucas be like, no, it's not. And then Dave's like, how is it? How isn't it? It should be, shouldn't it? But now you kind of are threading it being like, well, it could be, but it has origins in a whole other galaxy. Mm -hmm. And we know that the force itself and midichlorians all stem from the wellspring of the force at the center of our galaxy, which might imply it doesn't yet extend apply to others, you know? Which I, I was kind of like, we know Balon is at least still feeling something, right? So I'm assuming that the Force still exists. Yeah. I just don't know if it's permeated throughout this world like it has in our galaxy, you know? Yeah. I, I just don't know. There's so many questions there, but I, one, I, I like that those questions remain unanswered, and two, it just adds so much more to what Dathomiri magic could be. Where it might not be exactly the force, but it could be an analog, or it could be related. It could be uh, like an opposing force to it in a way, but still utilized the same way. I don't know. There's so many cool story threads that you can go with that. Hmm. So many more unknowns to our knowns. Yeah. 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 It'd be interesting to see what they do, what Dave does with that more. Mm -hmm. I'm also like, are we going to get those witches off this planet, you know? Like with Ahsoka coming and having Ezra here, like, is that something that we are gonna venture in more? Or is this gonna be kinda like, here's a little bit of information and we're not gonna dive into it too deep, you're just gonna get a threat of it, you know? Cause they also have that feeling of being the uh, the sisters of fate, right? Like uh -huh. in Hercules and Greek lore and stuff where they, they have sure. the thread, right? The, What's wrong with these scissors? Those, uh, those North people, mythology, you know? Yeah, the too. daughter, the mother, and the crone or whatever. Yeah, like those yeah. kind of, they have that kind of feel about them the, of the great mother and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's neat to, I don't know, Dave so are they, seems to pull from different things and it seems to be pulling from a... From are a they guy. transferring supplies from the ship or to the ship? I can't tell. I think Because I think probably to the ship and they are taking the the night mothers with them. Yeah. They talk something about the, they also talk something about the catacombs and stuff too. Yeah. I mean, well, I, I've said. seen the catacombs. I yeah. think they're going to take you at least two rotations. Yeah. They're right? emptying the catacombs, which maybe that's their army that they need to be able to attack, you know? Like I mean, I what, wouldn't what, what doubt would you it. keep in catacombs, you know? Usually in bodies. France, in France there's a lot of dead stuff. There's a lot of catacombs and dead and, and speaking of a lot of dead people, maybe those stormtroopers. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that was one of my thoughts how, too. Yeah. Of like, him talking about how much they lost though. Uh, kind of like, I'm like, eh, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. But looking at them, even the way they walk, like they don't seem quite as like rigid in yeah. their walk. Like, you know, like you watch stormtroopers in the original trilogy, mm -hmm. they're marching, right? Clone troopers are marching. When they're taking the one stuff, it, they, I don't know, it looks like yeah. they're kind of just moving. Like, I don't know. There's not yeah. as much, uh, I don't know, rigid tension. It, it doesn't feel like they are characters in manufactured suits. It feels like they're CG characters. Like, the ones that I walked... I get that. What shot? The, the ones that walked behind Enoch when, when Thrawn was walking up, they looked CG. He didn't, but they looked CG. Hmm. I just meant motion-wise and stuff of, like, comparing, like... The marching aspect, because even the clones in the prequel trilogy were all like CG, but very much so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But they would like felt like they would march and be. Yeah. They were very soldiery. Yeah. These guys, like if they're if they're undead stormtroopers that are just being used like Merrick or whatever, like sure. maybe they aren't quite as rigid in their discipline, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Though, they, the, whenever they all turned and walked with him, I felt like that was more in uniform than some of the other stuff they're doing. Yeah, I mean, just ex imperial like, yeah, ex-imperials that have been, I mean, they were, like, chanting Thrawn. Like, they've been under Thrawn's th thumb for ten years. Well, sure. Um, but, yeah, whether they're some type of night sister thing or not, like, they're very different. They're very cool outfits, and in terms of action figure stuff, like... The the problem with Hasbro right now is like they rely a little, in my opinion, too much on like, well, we already have this done, so now we just need a new head and we can just sell this figure again. But with stuff like this, you can just kit bash and make endless <laughs> amounts, and sure. I won't be upset because it'll feel like new a new character or a new mold. Sure, yeah, yeah, that's just really cool, and because it won't just be like like Chewbacca yeah. with black plastic. And oh man, that was so bad. <laughs> they, they've made a new one, but um, good. 
I know that's a very niche Star Wars area that not many people care about, but this entire episode, like the very few people other than you have complained. I'm about. I'm just saying the snail people, the 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 Night Sisters themselves, the Howler, the Howler, like the Stormtroopers, Enoch and his amazing faceplate. Uh, there's just so many cool the new, bandits. Yeah, the bandits. There the were bandits so many cool, cool new designs. Well, yeah, I feel like the second group we saw looked just like the first group we saw. Sure, but. It wasn't awesome, just as awesome, you mean? Like, you know, four, three designs yeah. that just look the same as the other four. Yeah, it's exactly like what Praetorian Guards were. Like, they came in, like, pairs of th uh, two. Yeah, right? but that makes sense, I think, because you get, uh, with them, I feel like that's a organization, a discipline, a soldier sure. group, right? Mm -hmm. Also, so, like, they're, you have soldiers they're fighting uniform. styles and, and kit and everything, like, match each other because they, they like, work together. Yeah. They work as a team. Yeah. Whereas, like, as bandits, usually I picture them more of, like, they're just kind of putting together Scavenging. whatever they have. Kind of, like, so, fallout. But they may bandits. not, and they may have more of a, uh, maybe yeah. they have more of a uniform aspect about sure. them, too, where it's, like, the guy with the big helmet, that's sure. the leader guy, you know? This guy's got a broken horn, that's because he's a big melee dude. I mean, if they're bandits, then they're probably some kind of former military. Possibly. Well, that's one thing, too, is, like, where are they from? Like, everyone on this planet, except for Thrawn and the sisters, are, like, covered in armor. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, like... Anybody could just be an undead weird creature. <laughs> I have be. no idea. Like, where do these nomads come from? What, what mean, kind of species would they look like, you know? Sure. I mean, it's possible that many different species have come to Peridia on the backs of uh, space whales, and, um, you know, throughout possibly. history. You yeah. know? They like, it could be like one sure. of those like seed worlds where like a lot of people go to them. Maybe. They mentioned about the Night Sisters like trying to harness the... And ride them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which is awesome. The Night Sisters and the old EU rode Rancors, but now Boba Fett does that, so they upgraded. <laughs> now oh, they yeah, ride sure. space whales. <laughs> yeah. But my thought on the band is like maybe they could be male Night Sisters, right? Like we've oh. never really had those. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, I've so always like kind of thought the Night, the Night Sisters a little maybe. more like they're kind of like uh, Gerudo from. Uh, from Zelda, where like they're primarily female and they find races that they can breed with. That's kind of what I always thought of with them. And now I feel like it's might be even more. I don't know. Like, I have no being idea. Being such a it's possible, but also society. it might not be because like I, it's just whatever we had before were like just Zabriks. You know? I know, but Zabriks so. also have the weird history that they're also a species that originated on Iridonia. And there's always been this kind of weird thing. Well, Dathomir and Zabriks are a little bit different. They call it, you know. So there's always been this idea that they were never the Exact same species. Exactly race, my point. You know? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. So, like, could this planet where the ancestors originated, mm -hmm. could they have a male version of the Night Sisters? And maybe they don't have magic, or maybe yeah. they are looked at differently, or maybe they're exiled because they are males, or mm -hmm. who knows? So I'm just or wondering where they these, don't have magic. Yeah. So I'm just curious on the nomad bandit kind of quality, like where they come from. Or no madge. No, I will not evoke Fantastic Beasts. All right, no madge. Yeah, I didn't like a good one. Movies. Yeah, we'll call them no madges from now on. I mean, it's just a shortening of no magic. I know. Yeah, with it a character. doesn't mean it has it's to be American connected. It's the American version of Muggle, Calvin. It doesn't have to be connected to Fantastic Beasts. Just I wasn't even thinking about it when I said it. Weird. You brought it up, and you have a problem with it. If you hadn't brought it up, nobody would have a problem well, with it right now. Well, let's call them uh, Muggles. <laughs> Muggles? No. That's ridiculous. It's a word. It's already been used. You can't, you can't have it. I, uh... You gotta, you gotta get rid of it. For it to be a word, yep. it has to have already been used, Eric. Can't copyright it. Every word has already been used. Nuh uh, not. <laughs> That's not a word. It is. It What's means it mean? Peace. Be what? with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Lumpy said that. I'm pretty sure that was. <laughs> <a word. laughs> um, I did like the. Uh, I want to say. I want to call it a metaness. I like that we have this. Uh, a moment with Ahsoka and Hu Yang talking mm -hmm. about the uh, history of the galaxies, part one, one two, two, and three, three. Mm -hmm. where it's it's like these stories for kids that probably have some kind of moral and mm -hmm. different aspects like that. It kind of makes you think a little bit of like Doctor Stone, like the yeah. Hundred Tales and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get to um, Balin talking about like this is a child story come fairy true tales. kind of thing, right? Like, this yeah. is based on a fairy tale I was told when I was younger. You don't you don't know this because you weren't in the Order. You were too mm -hmm. young for it, you know? But they have this long time ago in a galaxy far, far away story 
in their universe. Yeah. And it's just got this meta feeling of like, oh, for as a kid, where you're like, oh, that's like a children's story. Like Star Wars isn't real, but it could be real kind of thing. And yeah. I was like, I, I I found that to be kind of a, a fun, very sweet meta like discussion about mm-hmm. the fairy tale of it all. You mm-hmm. know, I just thought it was neat. Because like, yeah, I mean this this episode to me felt way more fairy tale than it did science fiction. Sure. A very high mean, fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Which Definitely. I think but Star Wars needs. That's why at one point I'm like, it's like we went to Willow. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, we're on that, whatever that planet is. Maybe that's what it is. Ward Davis comes out, he's going to be like, have a wand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. I loved the, just the kind of slower uh, focus moment with, I mean, I don't know if his name's Tota, but the, the Howler uh, yeah. and Sabine. I just really liked that we took the time to give character to this. You know, what, and any other movie or TV show would just be like, "Here's a horse, go." You know, and yeah, you know, we just gave it, we gave it a bit of a character. It was fun. Yeah, like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, but what part? Didn't the horse like save the the, the mm-hmm. Aragorn? What was his name? Horsey boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tingly name. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a dumb thing. What was his name? Breaker. <laughs> that it is. Huh? What was it? What'd you Bre- say? Breaka? No. Oh, damn. I don't know. Breako, I said. Breako? <laughs> I don't know his name. Damn it. Horse. <laughs> Did you whisper out of your Yeah, brain? I was like, Breako. <laughs> long face. I don't know. <laughs> Why the long face? <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, we got a lot from Balin in this episode, including mm-hmm. when he was speaking of Ezra. The a concept Boken of Jedi. a Boken Jedi. Now, a Boken is a wooden sword, a Japanese it's a, wooden it's a, sword. It's a training yeah. tool. Yeah. But I think even, because we looked up Boken not too long ago, I think it even means, like, sword, wood, Boken, you know? Um, but yeah, uh, so that would mean Luke Skywalker is a Boken Jedi. Like, not formally trained in the Jedi Order, really. Hmm. Like, he would be just as much trained as Ezra is by, you know, the remnant of a Jedi Order, you know? Sure, I guess so. Hmm. So like a Jedi trained in the wild, not under an official Jedi order, I guess. A wooden sword used to practice. Mm-hmm. It's usually katana shape. Uh, yeah, specifically yeah. for kendo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hmm. it, it has a specific discipline name too, but I can't remember right now. Because like some uh, practices, like they teach you to only use a bokeh and not ever graduate to a sword. I wonder if that was used before then. It must have been, right? Hmm. The idea of a bokeh Jedi. You like, mean like in It can- must have been like during the Clone Wars. Like, didn't Ventress never make it to like the Order? Right. Wasn't she trained yeah. other? She would be a bokeh like, Jedi. When even she was there, like, even though you're like, master. even though there's a Jedi Master yeah. who is in the Order, I believe, or yeah. at least was at one yeah. point, like, but he was exiled. Her training would have been in the wild. Yeah. So. yeah. I would put that just as much as Kanan training Ezra. Yes. Well, we, no, yeah. yeah. But what yeah. I'm saying is like it's not like it's a thing that happened because the order was destroyed. No, like, I don't probably think. Probably a terminology that yeah. was used of yeah. just yeah. someone being trained in the Jedi arts, mm-hmm. not actually officially within the order. Sure. Like if I'm trying to measure up like, okay, so we got some Jedi here. It's like, well, he's a Boken Jedi, so he's a little unpredictable. He doesn't really follow the standards of some of the others, maybe. Sure. You know? Like I'd almost put like if in the story like like who's Quinlan's master? Mm. Like Quinlan? Like it'd be interesting if he was like originally a Boken Jedi oh, and then came sure. into the order later on or something. I know like in that, the old EU he was trained by a Wookiee, I think. Oh really? But I can't Remember, I don't know if there's any canon stuff. It just, I don't know. I just find him to be an interesting one because of being like that, like Native American type of feel yeah. about him. Mm-hmm. Like he's been trained like yeah. in the wild as a Jedi, yeah. and then eventually gets brought into the mm-hmm. order after his training has gone through already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be a neat way to have him. I think he was trained by a Wookiee, and then Ala Secura is, was his, his Padawan. At Ayla least was? in at least in the Old Republic, like when they when John Ostrander made those characters, that's how it was. Hmm. Hmm. Man, as in, I always saw them as like peers, not yeah. like. Yeah. No, she's a lot younger. I didn't. I didn't think he was that old. Yeah, he's older. Yeah, I think that's part of it too. Is I didn't think mm-hmm. he was as old as that. I just mm-hmm. I, I love the 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 subtitles called him naughty, like little snail people, little crab naughty. people, yeah. naughty. But I, I just I, I just love they the have a ex- naughty language. <laughs> the extended look we got at their culture, their 
their nomadic uh, uh, setup, but they were just they just yeah they make you just want to explore yeah like there's just so many more so much potential in brand new galaxy you know sure I mean there's endless potential in the current galaxy we're in let's not you know kid ourselves but this could just it's almost for me it feels like a shame that everybody's just like let's get out of here <laughs> you know Thrawn and Ezra are like let's go but I don't even know if like the Chimera doesn't even, is it space worthy? <laughs> We've seen it in the atmosphere. I don't know. Um, I imagine maybe what we'll have to do is use some magic for it. Maybe um, in in Jedi Fallen Order, right? You have uh, a Night Sister there who like mm-hmm. cloaks you in magic, and you're in, like invisible to like get through into a planet. You know? Yeah. Like maybe yeah. there's something like that that they can do where it's like they envelop it in a. Safety I mean, bubble. That's how it got there. It came down in a bubble. That's how it got there, right? Ezra did that effectively. When yeah. He, well, and even back yeah. then, too, like, the glass was cracked and stuff, too, and then they yeah. still traveled through hyperspace, yeah. right? So, like, maybe you don't need to have air in super whale hyperspace. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all right, let's get to it. Lars Mikkelsen came on the scene. As Thrawn, and it was, it's like, it's so perfect that it's unnerving. It's, it's so weird, too. It's nearly the same as, like, Vader's entrance. Yeah. Walking to meet the Emperor, right? Sure. It's nearly yeah. that. <clears throat> yeah. I just, there's something about, like, the voice, but, like, seeing it come out of a person instead of, like, in a cartoon. It's weird, right? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, for me, weird in a good way. Yeah, is it I, weird I for you in a bad mean. way? I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. Like, um, I, want use, I want to use the word perfect. I've watched an animated <laughs> Phil Coulson, uh-huh. right, where it's still Clark Gregg voicing him. Sure. And I'm just like, oh yes, that's the voice that should be coming out mm-hmm. of that mouth because I'm used to the live action one and that's sure. what it is, you yeah. know. But it, this is the first time I can think of really having it in the reverse where I've had like, here's the voice actor, and now we have. The live action person doing it and stuff, and I love the voice. It's just, it's just a, a different thing to yeah. get used to. I think. I just think that it's so rare that we're in the presence of like actual perfection that it's like it's fucking with us. Actual perfection, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, he looks amazing. He, you know how long I've been waiting for a live action Grand Admiral Thrawn? No, I mean I decades. Get you. I, I mean, it's really cool to have, especially after having watched Rebels and enjoying yeah. Thrawn in that. Yeah, I think it's easier to put a real face. And not have the uncanny valley of an animated face that's meant to look similar rather than an original animated face. And then having a, the real actor's face, like, it's, it's, it's like going backwards in, in definition mm. where it's easier to see a high-res image in a in a low res image that's far away, right? Yeah, we're just taking a low res image and then trying to make a Make a it big and high res sure. close up. I right. get what you mean. It's it, it's interesting. I've enjoyed it. Like Hu Yang isn't as different for me because it's, it he almost just looks one for one, yeah. you know, and it's the same voice. And I'm like, okay, that's just now we have that character here. It's just you know, Thrawn has been here for a while and gone through some stuff. So, but it's just weird to hear his voice. Yeah. The only thing that's that bothers great. me. The only thing oh, at all. I'm be so mad. What? That bothers what? me. What? A bothers little me? bit, Eric. What's wrong? Is his hairline? What about it? It looks like a wig. Which what do you mean? I'm sure it probably is. All hairlines look everything. like a wig if your skin's blue. Do they? Yeah. Put blue on your skin. I'm, I'm like, look at the hairline. You're gonna be. He's like, not gonna. Like a, he's not like gonna blue himself. <laughs> uh, but, no, man. it's cool to have uh, Thrawn in live action. And it's cool to have that voice yeah. be mm-hmm. a part of it. You know, because the voice, my... the eyes, the expression. Like everything else is perfect. I, I like him better than when we got the Grand Inquisitor uh, in in Kenobi. Sure. Yeah. Like I, I like yeah. having Lars as this much more. Plus the story of that was weird, but <laughs> having the voice is the the thing that makes it work so much. Mm-hmm. I just wonder how hard it is to like have that voice while acting, because like I feel like in a in a voice acting sense, like you can kind of really like push your voice because that's all you're using. Here you're trying to find that middle ground of. I have to act and be thrawn like while making sure I have that same kind of voice and cadence yeah. and everything. So it's, it's great probably a little because, trickier. Well, the the acting involved in being thrawn on screen 
it's so subtle and and most of the expression is in the voice i think that lends to it a little bit too Mm. because he can be so like i don't know passive with his physical expression and Mm -hmm. acting that his vocal acting like it it screams to make up for it you know i get oh that's that's the character like it's he has to be subtle because he's constantly judging your expression you yeah can, you, you can't judge his like lie to me it doesn't change you know exactly yeah it's exactly like Tim Roth and lie to me I just mentioned lie to me yesterday Calvin during our one movie reaction <laughs> how are you talking about lie to me but it, it, honestly it was all nailed in the one exchange where Sabine's like you just don't understand and he just waits so long and she, perhaps not you know it yeah. just like she and that moment is very emotional in her eyes and he's just looking at her and then like amidst like perhaps not it just it, it felt like all the throngs that are in my head put together yeah like the the throng from air of the empire the throng from rebels and the throng from the books that Aaron and i have covered on uh on the channel which you should check those out mm-hmm. uh they're fantastic and i think that you can just watch, even if you don't read the books i think that you would enjoy those videos uh i'm waiting so to far see i'm seeing a cohesive throng I'm waiting to see if any of that stuff from the books really plays any part in anything that's going on. Yeah, I mean, right now... It, it, I, I don't yeah. want it to just feel like that. everything in that character from those books is just kind of like, we don't really care about any of this, you know? Yeah. But I also know not everyone's read those, so I don't want sure, things to no. feel like they came and, out of the I mean, blue. But I we're think already handled, doing that for people that haven't I think they handled Ahsoka books. very well as far as like, hey, you haven't seen animation? We're going to make yeah. sure you're covered and understand what's going on with like these flashback elements and mm-hmm. stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's juggling a lot of plates. That's, I mean, I want that to be a thing, but they're already juggling the plate of people that haven't seen Rebels and have no idea who this character is sure. as well. So I'm sure primarily that's the largest plate they're spinning. And over here, I would like some consistency with how incredible the character is in those books. I will be very interested. I don't know if there's like numbers or anything with it, but like how many people go back and watch like Rebels and Clone Wars and that kind of stuff after watching like Ahsoka. Sure. Like, I imagine there's going to be a, you know, Tons. I better go watch these and kind of get more it's, of the story yeah. and stuff, you know? It it's better gonna, be a lot. It's going to be so much. And it better translate people watching the reactions. <laughs> 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 I want to see those spikes. And then so we what, have, uh, oh, good. Uh, what did you guys think of uh, live action Ezra? Hey, you son of a bitch, that's what I was going to say. Well, good. <laughs> and I didn't take anything away from you. <laughs> he, he feels like an Ezra 10 years older. It sounds like Ezra. Uh-huh. I think it looks close enough to Ezra. I think another thing too yeah, is he has like, to sound like Aladdin. It works. You, <laughs> you, ha- you have him there. It's been some time. He's grown a beard. Like yeah. he's a little older. It's like having. I think this works better than having yeah. Freddie Prince Jr. voice Kanan in Bad Batch. You know, <laughs> like yeah. where it's like, I know he's trying to be young, but he sounds like this works he better. He sounds like he, a forty-year-old uh, man. Yeah, this works the other way. <laughs> yeah. Where it's like uh, there was Ezra. And now he is mm-hmm. older and he's this guy. But it's still, he's he's been kind of, I feel like he's delivering the same kind of feeling and cadence and oh, stuff yeah. of Absolutely. Ezra, which I think is cadence. great. The, the, the exact word I would have used. The what? The cadence. Is, yeah. It's, it's exactly the same as uh, Taylor Gray, I think was his name, that played yeah. Ezra. Taylor yeah. Gray. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think the Sabine actors are doing pretty good, too, um, yeah. for for being Sabine and being, you know, 10 years yeah, later no, and going just through some stuff and everything. Definitely feels more like season three and four Sabine, whereas season one and two Rebel Sabine was a little more lighthearted. Not lighthearted, but a little more uh, not so down on herself. Whereas this one, we still have the mystery of, like, apparently because of Ahsoka or something not trusting, her family was killed in Mandalore. Like, we still have that yeah. line from Balin. Uh, that I'm assuming we're going to try to settle. I hear we we'll figure out what happened, but you know, uh, Balin says, or no, uh, Thrawn, right? Who was who was it that said like it is that singular focus that was, will reshape our galaxy? It was Thrawn. Thrawn said yeah. that, right? Like the singular focus of finding Ezra, which is not a necessarily like he. It's he, not inherently a selfish thing, but it can. He was be. so shocked. That she was like, you would risk the fate of your entire galaxy for one Mm -hmm. singular focus. Mm -hmm. Just one person, not even the emperor. And I'm so curious what (laughs) what the plan is they have that that's the thing he said too. Like what's, like risking their galaxy. Like what's the big threat that he even views that he's bringing to the galaxy. Like. It's got to be tied to whatever Balin is sensing out there, right? Yeah, that's a thing the too greater talk power. About is yeah. like, what is that? Yeah. yeah, which also made me think of Willow. Yeah, 
They're, they they said that the nice sisters, and this is their homeworld. They're fleeing a power greater than their own. Well, that's what that's Balin's assumption. Because right? he's sensing something. Yeah, he doesn't he's, know what. It yeah, is. he senses something else out. Something there. calls to me. Something stirs. Yeah, so I wonder what it is. Something inside the planet. At first, I thought like, well, planet. what if what if in this galaxy the Night Sisters defeated the Jedi in like some war, and and now because of just atrophy and stuff like that, this galaxy sucks, and now they want to leave and take over another galaxy with. Yeah, teeming I, I, with life I don't know and whatever, what, but seems like there's something badder out mm-hmm. there. Badder. Which is another thing too is that the great mothers. Um, I don't know if it's because of the visions and stuff they have. They do have like or a dream if, connection, or, thing. or what exactly the reason is, but they seem to be able to smell Jedi and don't like them, you know what yeah. I mean. So like, is that because of a history that they do have with them? I mean, or they have to know about because, them. There has to be yeah, a reason that it, those fairy tales exist. Is it yeah. the thread, you know, that they're they're connected to with, like, the dreams with Morgan and that kind of stuff? Like, it feels like they've never left here. Mm-hmm. At least these ones. That's what yeah. it kind of feels like. They've been, sure. He said that they've been exiled, too. So, yeah, is there... Where's the fairy tales come from? Have we been here before? Is it related to things from, like, High Republic has dealt with a lot of hyperspace kind of travel things? Mm-hmm. You know, you could bring some of this into there or something. Or the Old Republic. Or further back. Did anyone else have a thought where this is one of those tinfoil theory kind of ideas? But whenever Balin is talking about like wanting to go to the beginning, and I'm just like, is he gonna use something and he's gonna be the guy who goes back to that like Bible epic 25,000 years ago story of finding the force? You know, which 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 one? Like way back in the beginning, Eric. Damn it, I didn't get his shirt. Hit it, punch him. Dawn 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 of the the Jedi. Jedi. Dawn of the Jedi, you mean? Yeah. I should get that tattoo, you know? Like, you, you should get how a useful tattooed. that would be? Well, you see! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you get it tattooed on the front, and so you can look down and see the timeline. Ooh, yeah, right up the center. Yeah. <laughs> DeBaba, one of the people that worked with us uh, last week, they were over at the whiteboard. She was a little confused about the timeline, so Cavill was explaining the timeline. You know, funny enough, like, well, actually, <laughs> just casually <laughs> have an excuse to take I love the shirt. idea of, like, you, like, tattoos that you can use. Like, yeah. I love the, like, the guy that has a ruler on his like thumb oh, yeah. or something, he just uses it. But that would be so funny. <laughs> be funny. But no, like that was a uh, random tinfoil hat theory idea. But uh, I was, I'm just curious on what he's looking for, where he's talking about going to the beginning. And well, he talked and, about the cycle of violence, right? Sure. Yeah. Which is like these guys rise, then they mm-hmm. fall, then something else rises, then it falls. Well, right. The c- cycle like, of power specifically, though. Yeah. Like that's what we like keep violence saying. is used to gain power, but they always lose it eventually. And he's like. This cycle never ends. I hate it. Mm-hmm. I want to go to the beginning and stop it. So what's the beginning yeah. of power? What's his plan? What's he looking at? We know he, he kind of has some visions of the future, right? Does he have stories of, like, is it, like, a world between world thing that he's seeking? Or is it, like, a, a father thing that he's seeking? Yeah. Or I'm curious on his motives a lot. Because there's... There's that wiggle room we talked about where sometimes he doesn't seem as... Like, he didn't kill Sabine. He's keeping his word. Yeah. A lot of Sith wouldn't do that, but he has that honorable feel about he's him, He's right? not quite Sith. He's <laughs> something he else. Sith, yeah. he, I mean, they even describe him as a mercenary. Yeah. But, and he said, like, you know, I didn't train you to be a Jedi. I trained you to be something oh, more. No. Right before they killed that officer in the first episode, like, we're not Jedi. Yeah. But sure, yeah. yeah. But I, I don't necessarily feel like they're, like, we are Sith. Either, no. You know? Yeah. You can't so, have to be trained by a Sith to do that. I mean, like Ventra, she was like, I am Sith. Duke was like, ha ha, ah! <laughs> <laughs> lights up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> sure, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just, Balin has been one of those characters that I'm just like, what are they, what's he going yep. for? Where are we going with him? I, like, I hope they get a good story with him. And I, I lay so I much, I, I lay so much down at Ray Stevenson's feet because I feel like just the dialogue that you have, other actors could go a different way, but he's so like, Subtle and reserved sometimes. He has like such like he wants to say more but won't. Yeah. And like he's like, I gotta figure this out before you figure it out. Like he's just like he just brings a lot to the table and it's it's so bittersweet to see one of my favorite actors and one of my favorite franchises and knowing that when this season is done, that's it. It, is, it sucks, but it almost makes it more special. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's why I'm like curious on what they did with this story. Yeah. Cause like I'm hoping that he kinda has a good conclusion in this or something yeah. too like he's he's to where, of all of these characters 
Like, it feels like he exists between the scenes Mm -hmm. more than the others. Because he feels like his, his, his thoughts and his... He just feels broody, and he's had time to think and everything. Yeah. Such a great performance. And I quite liked uh, Shin in this as well, being a lot more, like, she just she seems like she's a lot more interested versus just following orders. Yeah. Like, she wants to understand. Well, she's she's participating mm-hmm. in this plan, not just yeah. executing it, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that one part was just like, ah. You know, like, ah, they're just stories. They're like, I don't know. But, like, you're standing on this planet. Like, this is significant. And I think that that's really hitting her. Uh, also, for the people that have read the other Thrawn books, and this might come into it, but there's a part here where Thrawn, like, I want all the information about Ahsoka Tano. I'm like, her master. And I want to be like, he knows Anakin Skywalker. Uh and he knows what will be coming with him, too. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be... If that's what we do here, that's going to be interesting. No. That would be one thing that would be nice to pull in with that. It's, uh-huh. like, it's not a huge thing, but it's like even just people who know, like, well, he's part of the Empire. He was yeah. in there. He's aware of Anakin yeah. and Darth Vader, as a lot of people, especially now, are, mm-hmm. right? It's so, been a few yeah. years, and there's a lot more people than when Darth Vader was around that mm-hmm. are aware of Anakin and his legacy and everything. So, yeah. I don't know. It could be really cool to have... There, yeah. those two talking, mm-hmm. you know, Ahsoka and Thrawn, and yeah. a discussion of that, or him messing with her, or whatever the case is. Sure. <sighs> or just the knowledge that Anakin was not a uh, traditional sort of Jedi. master mm-hmm. or Jedi. Like just having another wild card in there, like Ezra. Yeah. <laughs> He, has, he didn't even catch that she's hold, she still has a saber, did he? Well, it doesn't look like his anymore. Yeah, she has modified it a bit. But I bet you he'll, when he gets a good look at it, he'll see it. Oh, man, I hope he made a new stapler. White saber. That was my favorite. How would he make a new one? I don't know. Do they have kyber crystals here? Maybe. I don't know. Where would he get a kyber crystal? I don't know. But then, you gonna hold over that? How did the Jedi get know. here? In order for the Night Sisters to know about them. Hey, I don't know. We know did, they, some... did those Jedi not use lightsabers? Because that would be an interesting thing. Maybe not. Maybe those Jedi used battery packs with things connected to their lightsaber okay. on the bottom. Well, would they still use uh, Kyber for the blade? Or would they... Yeah, I'm not sure. It gets, I just know they had battery pack backup, like old legends things. Yeah. I don't, think, backpack... I don't think anything of that has in canon anymore, but... I don't think so. <laughs> There's old stories or rumors of that idea, I guess. Legends. If anyone knew, it would be in the Jedi Archives. Jocasta we knew. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, we need a poll for this episode, episode six of Ahsoka. Well, guys, a uh, poll for this week. We want to know what your thoughts are on the stormtroopers that Admiral Thrawn has. We want to know if you think if any of them are dead. And then we'll have some options ranging between most of them to none of them. So if you think it's a ridiculous idea and they're all alive, then tell us that. And for the first time ever, you can go to blindwave.com, just go to the video page for Ahsoka 1-6 and find the poll. It's there? It's there. That's really easy. Yeah. Wow. So go do that. See you next week. Guys, thank you very much for watching this episode of Ahsoka with us. Please, I know we only have two episodes, but please, we want you with us along the ride with uh, Wave Squadron. So please hit the subscribe button. We'll see you guys back here next week for more Ahsoka.